Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. That biblical promise found at John 11, 25 and 26 set the tone for the commemoration service in honor of Queen Elizabeth II. The longest serving British monarch, Queen Elizabeth died in September 8th at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. As head of the Church of England, the Anglican Church, St. John's Cathedral played host to this event on Saturday. Bishop Philip Wright was the service officiant. In the name of Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father, grace, mercy, and peace be with you. We meet this day to remember before God Her late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, to renew our trust and confidence in Christ, and to pray that together we may be one in Him, through whom we offer our prayers and praises to the Father. The event also featured a remembrance address delivered by the Governor General, Dame Froyla Salam. For many of us present, Her Majesty carries a special place in our lives and it is right that we bid her farewell to mark the end of a life full of milestones and a life of service to her country and to the world. Queen Elizabeth's 70 years on the throne saw much change. The modern era we are now experiencing was in part ushered in by a post-war recovery in an economic, cultural, social, and political paradigm. Her long life of service and dedication were undertaken at a time when a new world order was emerging. She spoke of an imperial family in the 1950s that no longer exists today. The post-war years were a great time of change for all countries. We now take for granted organizations such as the United Nations, but in 1945, they were new and yet to build solidarity and common cause among countries. Queen Elizabeth expanded the initial group of independent countries, which was started under her father, George VI, from just seven to 56 members in 2022. And while the Commonwealth figures out what to do in the second post-Elizabethan era, the Governor General also reflected on Her Majesty's role as the defender of the Anglican faith. Juxtaposed to that is the welfare of the peoples of the world. In accordance with the precedent established by Henry VIII, the Queen was also the defender of the faith and supreme governor of the Church of England. Her strong personal faith provided a solid foundation and was ever present in her annual Christmas messages. In 1981, the year of our political independence, Her message on collaboration between nations and of courage are timeless and bring particular resonance in the global challenges of climate change, economic instability, and wars. She said, we are also trying to reach beyond a nation's responsibility for its own citizens. There is a wide disparity between the wealth of nations, and I have found that there is a spirit of eagerness to redress this throughout the world. The recurring theme throughout Her Majesty's life was one of a keen sense of duty and obligation, one which the Governor General says we should emulate in our own lives. Queen Elizabeth did her work with unwavering dedication for over seven decades and unto her last days. I recall listening to the news as she performed her last duty welcoming the latest Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, wondering where, at 96 years of age, she got the energy to do her work with such charm and ease. She reminded me of our very own Miss Jane Usher, who went to work every day because she wanted to and not because she had to. Queen Elizabeth is a beacon shining onto us reminding us through her work that what matters most is our values and ideas. Queen Elizabeth reigned unlike any other monarch, but she had a family, one which she loved 
dearly. You see, we often forget that the queen was not just a public figure, but she was also a mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Her family, her four children, the Prince of Wales, sorry, King Charles III, the Princess Royal, Prince Andrew, and Prince Edward, her eight grandchildren and 12 great-grandchildren should remain in our prayers as they continue to mourn her loss. Dale McDougall, Love News.